Welcome to another episode of Coaching Chats. I'm your host, Rukshana Aliyeva. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Dr. Tamara Beckford. Dr. Tamara is a board-certified emergency medicine physician, author, speaker, and CEO of UR Caring Dogs. She trains companies on employee wellness strategies that reduce stress in the workplace, improve retention, and help lower healthcare-related costs. She hosts the Dr. Tamara Beckford Show. She has interviewed 215 physicians about self-care and their work outside clinical medicine. Dr. Tamara has been featured in Forbes, Yahoo Finance, Voyage Houston, LinkedIn News, Rolling Out Magazine, and Kevin M.D. The podcast named after the show ranks in the top 3% of podcasts globally. She has presented about wellness on many platforms, including Power to Fly, uh, the, uh, the Grants Professionals Association, Centerpoint Energy, Physician Coach Support, and Garden State Bar Association. Dr. Tamara is a success mentor at Hunter, um, if I pronounce it correctly, MD Business School, which helps physicians uh, build six and seven figures businesses. Hunter MD is ranked 315 on the Inc. 5000 list of fast, fastest growing companies in America. Her content has been viewed over 1 million and 600 uh, times on social media which is uh, fascinating and that she has been named as LinkedIn top voice for leadership development, employee engagement and employee wellness. She also co-authored two best selling books made for more and thriving after burnout. The New Jersey Academy of Sciences, uh, Sciences recognized her as a COVID-19 hero because of her work during the pandemic. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about the burnout, specifically how to overcome burnout in the workplace. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to this another episode of Coaching Chats, Dr. Tamara. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm listening to that intro and I'm like, who is that? <laughs> um I'm so, I'm so thrilled to have you on my show, Dr. Tamara, and your background is absolutely fascinating. Um, absolutely fascinating. And um, yes, I was, <laughs> did you want to say anything? Sorry. No, no, no. Just really thank you. And, you know, the work that we do, and we were talking about this prior to um, even, you know, hitting the record button, um, for those of us who pre create content and we put it out there, it's great to see when it resonates because that makes us know that, yes, this is an issue. This is something that people need more of. And for you to bring us on to highlight that issue, we really appreciate it. So thank you for having me on. My pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Um, Dr. Tamara, I would like to kick off our conversation with, mm -hmm. um, yes, with, 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 a burn, with a burnout. Mm -hmm. What are some common signs of burnout in the workplace? Absolutely. So we'll start off too by, you know, like what is burnout? People hear this so often that it's become secondary. <laughs> it's become like a secondary word. They trip, they're like, oh, I'm burned out in this. But as we talk about burnout, burnout is really a psychological stress, chronic stress that occurs in the workplace. Um, and because it is chronic stress, it can have a lot, as you mentioned, of physiological, mental, and emotional um, side effects. What I usually do with the definition of burnout is break it down into the three Ds. So the D is for depletion. Depletion is you're having emotional exhaustion. You are just, your cup is empty when it comes to any type of um, emotion, you're just completely run down. And then we have detachment. Detachment is depersonalization. When you start to use a phrase here in the US, a lot of time people say, oh, it is what it is. Oh, it, you know, 
So can you do this? Ugh, whatever it is, what it is. Like you're just attached. Your coworker might need you emotionally and you just, you're apathetic. You have no emotion left. You're detached from your work. And that, that that brings us to the third D, which really is, like I said, a decreased sense of accomplishment in your work. So that additional detachment. You're not really seeing your um, how your work can provide value to the company, to the organization, to anyone around you. So you... Others are telling you that what you're doing is so amazing, but you don't feel it because you just don't, you're, you're empty at that point because you've really, and that's what burnout is. You've completely used up all of your energy, emotionally, physically, and um, you're empty. So you're depleted with energy. You're exhausted. You are detached. You're apathetic. And you don't see the value that you bring to the company, although others see the value you bring. So that's um, burnout in a sense. So, um, you know, for those who are even thinking about it, there are a couple of different phases. So, you know, there are five phases <laughs> to this. And, you know, we can get into it during um, this wonderful conversation that we're having. So here we are. Starting out, though, think about the three Ds if you are in any space about um, burnout. Thank you yeah. very much for sharing. Oh, sorry, did you want to add something? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah, wanted sorry. people to really think about it um, as, you know, we get into this wonderful conversation. Yeah, sure. And thank you uh, for sharing such a such a good like a framework as well and something to um, be aware of because burnout I found burnout is one of those things that people don't notice until it really creeps in. Yes. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I think I have a burnout. Mm -hmm. and, um, and with regards to that, in your opinion, how can employees identify if they are experiencing burnout? Lovely, lovely question. So as you're mentioning, burnout can sometimes be, I even liken it to, it's a little sneaky. Because uh, when you're in it, then you look back and you said, oh, my gosh, there were signs, but I didn't notice the signs. Because especially if you are the type of um, personality that you feel and you'll say, I thrive under stress. I'm, you know, the type A personality. Oh, this is just who I am. We're all able to handle stress, but we're supposed to do it in small phases. It should not be consistent, right? And that's important because that's part of our physiological makeup as human beings. Stress is important because it alerts us. Something's going on. We need to run away. <laughs> so, for example, and I'll start off with our physiological things and then I add it to what, how it happens in the workplace. Physiologically, you know, when we were there in the older times, if there's danger around, there's a stress response that we have. The stress response alerts us. It releases these chemicals that gives us energy so that we can get away from the stress. And that's our sympathetic response. However, it's not made to be on all the time, right? It releases that cortisol. We get this burst of energy. We're running away from danger. And then the danger dissipates. And then we go back into the rest and relaxation phase. So that's normal physiological response, right? With chronic stress, you're just releasing hormones and hormones to just consistently there. Your cortisol is one of those hormones that's there that's just constantly being released. And that can have a lot of um, medical um, effects, uh, negative effects on the body, which we'll talk about later. When you're at work, you might tell yourself, as we said, that I'm good under stress. But like I said, it should be periodic stress. A deadline's coming up, yes, and then the deadline comes, and then you relax, right? It should be then the deadline, and then the deadline, and then the deadline. So when you find yourself not being able to take periods of relaxation, then it takes a toll on you, right? So if we go back to the original definition of burnout, burnout is a physiological response to 
chronic stress. <laughs> so during that, there are a couple phases of it. There were the honeymoon phase, and I actually have some notes on that. So you have the honeymoon phase. You just start in the work. You're excited. You have great ideas. You're just ready to throw out these ideas. And actually, I remember even being that person. I finished training and I got my first big girl job in the hospital and I had all great ideas, had to help to run this. You know, I said, oh, we can help to streamline this. Tons and tons of ideas, right? That might be you. So you're in a honeymoon phase. Then you started to get this onset of stress. You're feeling a little bit of stress, but you're saying, okay, I can handle it. You're on phase two. In phase three, the stress now becomes chronic. You know, it's just there and you are starting to notice that you're you're not wanting to go to work as much. You might wake up, it's Friday and you're happy, it's Monday and you're just like, oh, right? And then you get to the phase four, which is the burnout phase, which we're talking about, where you're in the car, 30 minutes of pep talk to be able to get out of the car to even get into the job. You get there and as we talk about, you are depleted. No matter how much you sleep, you're, you wake up and you're exhausted. You know, technically they said, oh, get eight hours of sleep. You're on 10 hours and you're still exhausted, right? You're detached, your coworkers, hey, you know, isn't that great that this happened? Eh, it is what it is. <laughs> you start using those phrases. And then we talk about the depersonalization. You know, you don't find any joy within your work. So that part is burnout. The fifth part is the part that's even worse. And that's when you're in crisis mode. And that's the part that we try to avoid getting to because constant stress, chronic stress can move you from the physical portion to the mental portion. So now depression sets in, anxiety sets in. And with that, the techniques that we're talking about for burnout and to try to avoid and to bring you out, they might not be enough. You will now need a professional, a mental professional to even get you beyond the face. Because once you're in crisis mode, then you're moving on to mental illness section. And that's why it's so important for us to discuss burnout and for us to try to prevent, you know, us getting to those phases of phase five burnout. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. That's so um, critical to know. And I'm yes. sure many of our listeners can uh, relate or resonate with that. I, mm -hmm. I totally um, could resonate with everything you said. Pre-pandemic mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. uh, generally when I was employed, I was that, that type of person you um, you just described. Mm -hmm. I would start a job, I would be very excited. Obviously, it's a new job. Um, and then when uh, the work kicks in with all uh, deadlines, targets, um, Yes, and that get I remember that got really stressful. And then when I found myself, um, I felt like I was burning out. If I obviously don't take steps, it will probably have even more negative uh, consequences. And I myself come from a very high performance like background. Like if yes. you don't perform, obviously you know you'll be out. <laughs> and I, I I knew that, um, and that's why I always like I have to be on my A game. Mm -hmm. Always make sure that I keep my boss happy, you know, I um, meet the deadlines, everything. But at the same time, how it can, as you said, impact uh, mental health and um, our physical health overall if we don't have some stuff. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it, and we're talking about this because there are others out there who probably are feeling it, but he can't put the finger on it. You know, they're listening and said, this feels familiar. I, I couldn't figure out what it is, but I, this is how I'm feeling. Yeah, you're so right. No matter how much sleep I get, like, I'm just still exhausted. And each time I think about my job, my energy level drops. And when I'm there, I, I'm doing my best, but I don't feel as if I'm contributing. And I don't feel that. So now you know what's going on. That's mm -hmm. burnout. That is burnout. <laughs> so, yeah, 
Yeah, it's so true. Is it like, a, um, I would say, is it like a medical term, right? Is it like a healthcare issue, you would say? It's like a health issue, I would say, in the medical terms, isn't it? Um, burnout, not directly used as it is used in medicine now because um, it has highlighted uh, a lot of how those in the medical profession is feeling. So has it been added to the vocabulary? Yes. But as we mentioned, a lot of people use burnout um, to define other parts of what's going on in their life. But in its true definition, it is related to workplace. It's related to your job and it's related to your occupation. So in its true definition. So yes, we might say, you know, with my relationship with my significant other, oh, wow, they're stressing me out. I'm so burned out. But in its true definition, <laughs> it's related to occupation. It's related to your job and to your workplace. Um, here in the, the US and, you know, I'm pretty sure all over the world during the pandemic, um, there was a huge, um, uprise in the word burnout, especially in relation to those of us in healthcare because of um, the added stress. So everything that you see, if you think back um, for those who worked in healthcare in the pandemic, and when I say work in healthcare, this does not necessarily mean only us as doctors or those who were nurses those who are in the healthcare period, because in order to make um, us this world go round, we need people in different areas. The doctors and the nurses are not the only people in the hospital, <laughs> if you think about it, right? We have other um, occupations there who were also aiding us. And if you look at the emotional um, trend of what happened, you can see how the burnout occurred and you see it but it's highlighted a lot um you know for the nurses and the doctors but there are others who went through burnout too um and it was a lot of the emotional depletion that we talk about exhaustion you know you didn't see an end to it um emotionally the way that i described it too during that time was we got placed in a I felt we, as if we got placed in like a military type environment where you're seeing a mass catastrophe, but you're not trained to have that onset of consistent onslaught for that period of time. So I am an emergency medicine physician, as you mentioned. So I'm used to seeing death and dying, but not seven, eight people dying every day maybe one person every two, three weeks, a month, two months, three months. So you're able to replete and replenish your stock of how you're dealing with the emotions of losing a patient. But imagine moving from that to the increase, the onset of just 10X of what you're normally used to. And because you're in an environment where we still had no idea of what this thing was, you didn't know when it would end. So I can tell you, okay, you know, if you're in um, the workplace, we're gonna have our last two um, weeks of this month is our amped up week because we're gonna try to hit our quota. So we're gonna start working harder and harder and harder. And then when we get to the 30th of this month, we know, and that gives you an idea mentally, okay, I'm working hard, but I have a deadline. Imagine you're working hard and you don't have a deadline that's where the depletion exists and that's what can happen. And as you're mentioning in the high pressure job where you were in, and for some, some um, of your listeners, you're in high pressure jobs where it appears that you just never hit a deadline. There's no way for you to continue in a position like that indefinitely. It's just not possible. No, no, it's not possible. No, because I, I even remember, I, I think I even had some anxiety issues because mm -hmm. every morning I would wake up and say, I would, I would, my thought process would be, okay, on my to-do list, like, did I do this? Did I um, um, meet that, that deadline? Because I was always, I had to make sure that I perform well 
because mm-hmm. obviously we have that performance reviews and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, and that anxiety sometimes, um, yeah. And maybe, yeah. I, <laughs> and again, to your point, uh, Dr. Tamara, just I wanted to take a moment and to say how I greatly appreciate uh, people who work at healthcare. The work you guys do, it's just um, tremendous, you know, saving people's life and generally the work working hours and what you have to um, deal with, as you said, death and all other things apart from that as well. It is just um, every time when I look at people from healthcare, I was like, how do you do it? How do you cope mentally, physically? Because it's a long hours and plus a lot of things uh, that mm-hmm. come. Yeah, thank just, you. Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's and it's so important to um, raise awareness, raise awareness, and be aware of these things. And and the people who work on healthcare, obviously, they know more than anyone um, mm-hmm. how how it feels. Here in the UK, um, I'm based in the UK. We have um, NHS, mm-hmm. so and yeah, we obviously I, I do know how. Um, you know, people constantly burnt burnt out in, in yes. that particular area here, and you work as an emergency room doctor, right? In, it's ER, Correct. yeah. And I could Correct. imagine you deal with trauma, and because that's a type of uh, area mm-hmm. when you know when someone breaks something, right? You have mm-hmm. to fix it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, here in the U.S like it's the trauma and i think in the in the uk the is the a and e so okay. it's the equivalent of um what i do here in the united states mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so trauma is a part of it um heart attacks um and the emergency room it's it's a place where whatever comes in you have to try to figure it out that's that's just the nature of it. And figuring it out means that you're trying to stabilize what's going on, get it to a point where you can get it stable. You might not be able to complete it to the end, but you can get it stable and then you can, you know, pass it on to someone who can do the last step. But the first step is always bringing stability to whatever situation <clears throat> that comes in. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's every time I go to A and E here, I feel like I have I have a little bit of trauma emotionally <laughs> because when you're um, in line queuing to see a doctor, you see mm-hmm. all, the, all 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 people with all different conditions, and um, it's one of those places like you, I I feel like I never want to be, mm-hmm. in, but I feel for you doctors who have to obviously you know, and you you're doing obviously a very important job too you know, mm-hmm. safe lives and, but yeah, it's just me, maybe I'm extremely sensitive person. Um, no, it's, it's, it's a, it's an environment where, um, you know, we'll talk about like, even if you think about it as our, that's my quote unquote workplace. So from the inside out, it looks different than the outside in. So there are a couple things that um, we keep in mind when you're from the outside looking in, in an emergency room or an a e is that it's going to look very chaotic. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're looking like ants are just scrambling all over the place. But from the inside out, there's a certain method to the chaos because you're always having to determine what is the most important thing at that time and keeping that juggling that along with the urgent thing because we have emergent and then we have urgent right so the emergent things can pop up at any time so that's the uncertainty of the a and e or the er and then you have the urgent things that are not as prioritized, but it's important. For example, um, you have someone who is coming in in a bad car accident and their blood pressures and so on aren't looking good. That's now becomes that's the emergent thing, right? You can have someone who is in another um, accident playing soccer and their ankle is twisted. You know, that's now that's urgent. Both people are in pain. So 
<laughs> you know, both people want to be attended to, but we also have to keep in mind the emergent person can pass and die if we don't attend to them immediately. And then the urgent person, you know, you try to attend to their pain, but you might have to wait a little longer. So from the outside in, it looks different than the inside out. So you're constantly on the inside out juggling in your mind. Okay. And um, for me as an ER doctor, what's always in my mind is who's the sickest? Who's the sickest? Who's the sickest? Who's the sickest? Okay. Who has become the sickest? Who started off as number three, but now has moved up to number one. And um, so those are the ways that um, we prioritize. And you know, alert and going back to what we're talking about burnout and chronic stress, you can see how it's important for me to not work every single day, right? Because when I'm at work, that's what's going on. Who's the sickest? Who's the, so that's constant, constant, constant. Until my shift ends, I'm constantly thinking, who's the sickest? Who's the sickest? Who's the sickest? That's adrenaline. That's the cortisol. That's the rush. That's the, okay, I finally stabilized everyone. It looks like it's starting to calm down. And then like a heart attack comes in, boom, the rush starts again. So it's important to recognize in any industry that you're in, how your body responds and how is your industry bringing the stress to you like how do you respond or react to stress in your workplace and why it's so important to step back and take time off it's not possible to consistently work under high stress and be functional like i always say we're not robots we're people <laughs> so it's important to take time off and to de-stress and that's part of prevention and burnout, and it's also part of the cure. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definite. As, as they say, uh, prevention is better, yeah, than yes. the cure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and I will definitely would like to, uh, Dr. Tamara, I definitely would like to come back um, on like strategies, how you cope yes. with with um, burnout um, mm -hmm. at, in, in, your work, at, in your workspace and generally in your life and self-care. Um, maybe slightly late in that conversation uh, because mm -hmm. obviously, you, you know, now I don't want, I don't normally compare myself to anyone, but obviously where I used to work compared to your work, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, you always have to prioritize people who is, mm -hmm. you know, um, more sick um, because, you know, there are really life threatening situations. Um, yeah. I, I just could imagine how, you know, I was like, what coping strategies do you have, <laughs> you know, to be able to function well and not um, taking it like personally? I actually mm -hmm. had somebody on my show a few months ago, uh, a person who is a coach in trauma. So he mm -hmm. provides uh, coaching or training sessions to healthcare professionals mm -hmm. um, who experience trauma as a result of their work. That was mm -hmm. um, so interesting as well to know because absolutely. Uh, yeah, I know. And, and, and it's so well needed. So there are a couple of things that um, are important when you're in um, environments of high stress. And one of them that I just mentioned is being able to take periodic time off. And um, the other part goes along with what you're saying, which is part of self-care, right? And uh, for me, so for my personal, what I do is I have the amazing <laughs> job and ability to work with others on things that are not related to direct healthcare. So I have my life is structured that I have two parts. So I'm in entrepreneurship, which I know for those who are entrepreneurs are like, wait a minute, entrepreneurship is stressful. I know, but it also adds to my creative part. So I don't get to use that part of my brain as much in medicine because medicine is really set to, you know, that side of the brain is just the right side, critical thinking and just consistently going. And coming up with creative ways to um, to treat a patient, it's not, you don't get to do it as much because there are standard protocols 
you know, on how you treat certain medical conditions. Now, every once in a while, yes, I get to be creative if I'm using all my protocols and they're not working. As a naturally creative person, I can step back and say, all righty, let's do this for this period of time. And then, you know, you're able to get this done. And uh, yes, you know, if you have a great outcome, that's wonderful. But overall, creativity occurs on my other side, which is on entrepreneurship. So now that balances me out, right? So I get to use the analytical skills consistently, and then now I get to use the creative side. So I get to solve problems, which is what um, I like to do, but I get to do it in a creative sense. And I get to work with others and watch them flourish and blossom. So that's almost as the, the part of the gratitude practice that one does when you're helping others and then you're providing um, great aid to them, but the response to you, that you have within your body is 10 times the amount that it is that you even give. So as much as you're given to others, you're given to yourself even more with um, that. So it's a little bit almost like gratitude practice. Another thing that I do is um, that I really try to carve out time for those who are important in my life. That's something that we as human beings, we as type A personality people, you can start to put your job in front of those who are important to you in order of importance, right? Oh, well, you know, I'm so needed in the job. Mm, maybe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just so it's such an important person. Mm, yeah, but you're important, but you're replaceable. To your family, you're not replaceable. Those memories are not replaceable, right? So once I started to put in order of importance what really brings value to me, then that balances me out. So yes, there are certain parts that I have mom guilt because I do have two young sons, but the guilt has dropped tremendously. Why? Because I get to spend time with them and I do things with them. And now I can say, okay, wow, I'm building a life that I truly love. I get to do my clinical and I get to, you know, do my entrepreneurial, helping others, um, reducing stress, reducing burnout, realizing, wow, these techniques that I've used, look how powerful it is. And look at the life that I'm enjoying. You can do this too, right? So that's another thing. And then there are other um, meditation or faith-based. For me, it's faith-based. Um, meditation, it's still the same thing. So I just meditate using faith-based meditation, but others might meditate using non-faith-based. But what does that do? It centers you. It makes you realize that although you are someone within the universe, everything is not dependent on you, right? It takes the pressure off. It brings clarity to your mind. You dump a lot of the stress and the anxiety by just taking that time to center yourself and recognizing how important you are to the universe and how important you are to yourself. That takes a lot of um, stress off and it reduces anxiety, as I mentioned before. Another thing that's um, also important is a lot of self-development recognizing where you are right now, you might think that I know it all. That's the first sign that you don't know anything. <laughs> and you have to resist the temptation and resist the urge to keep thinking, I know it all, I know it all, I got this, I got this. We all suffer from that. And we all have to pull ourselves in and work on ourselves from the inside out. So personal development books, understanding how your mind works, understanding how your mind works to help you, but also understanding how untamed your mind is and it can work against you. So books, podcasts, um, you know, podcasts even like this one, for those who are listening, they help to rein you in because you're getting expert advice in short periods of time. And then you get to sit and think, how does this apply to me? 
And wow, I can use some of these techniques to better myself. So those are some of the things that I do. And something that's so important to me is quiet time. Now, having time to yourself, and this is even different than meditating, but just time for yourself to be creative, to muse, to visualize where you would love to be, to visualize your life, to visualize where you want to go in life, the things that you have accomplished, to be grateful for that, um, to look at what you would like to accomplish. Just really having a quiet time is important. And then the opposite of that quiet time, which is connecting with those who are like-minded people who can help you to release that beautiful hormone, that dopamine and serotonin through laughter, through friendship. That's all very, very important in reducing stress and reducing burnout. Oh, that's, that sounds absolutely fantastic, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Tamara. And I think it, I, I love how you said about that space for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's so important to have for that, to allow that creativity, uh, self-reflection, because if we all uh, like busy, 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 work, 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 we don't have time to actually sit down uh, and reflect on our life, like where we are, where we want to be, like what, what do we want from life and all these mm -hmm. things are so important. Thank you for sharing all your practices. Uh, they are really, really helpful. Um, I've been... Um, uh, doing them myself as well, and I could totally resonate with that. Thank you. Yeah, thank My you. pleasure. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's so it's so important. And um, yes, yeah, I, I also love when you said about people, me um, being around like-minded people. Mm -hmm. It's it's so it's so vital as well, because um, obviously, if you are surrounded by people who are negative. Um, who have this, um, yeah, this negative outlook on life? It will impact as well your mental health. Absolutely. Um, or who have different, uh, probably core core values, different yes. from yours. So it's important. You, you yes, can... absolutely. And and you know, it's also important to realize that your circle might change. Like as you develop and you work on yourself, be, if you were around people even and this applies to work and this applies to you know outside of work if you're around people at work and they're constantly um complaining so you came in and you're enthusiastic about your job and you're around people who are constantly complaining and they can't find anything positive where do you think you'll eventually be right there if you are in your personal life around people who will persistently have negative views on things, you're saying, wow, it's such a sunny day out. Yeah, but then you're going to get sunburn. So what is the point of the sun even being out? And, you know, we might as well. So if you think about it, you can never have that positive view, then eventually you'll step out and say, oh, the sun's out. Oh, here we go. I'm going to get sunburned. And, you know, so you have to filter who you want to be around and where and filter that to where you want to be. We're talking about burnout and we're talking about chronic stress. Is that the life that you want? The answer is no. Take an inventory. What's around me is leading to the burnout and the chronic stress that I'm having right now. Who around me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes it might not be what, sometimes it might be who. Who around me is leading to this chronic stress and the burnout? Is there anything that I can change that might alter this? Sometimes it might not be leaving that job. Maybe it's just leaving the circle that you are around in the job. You know, maybe it's the outlook that you have. So this is not a blaming. This is a self inventory. If you've taken the self inventory and your job has no deadlines and chronic stress, okay, it's the job. If you've taken that self inventory and you show up 
And no matter, um, you know, you do have your deadlines, but you're always procrastinating until the very, very, very end. And then you're saying, oh, I'm so stressed out. But you're around everyone who had the same period of time. But those who you're around were all procrastinating until the very end and then consistently complaining that it's always too stressful. But you have others who have been able to pace themselves and get it done. Maybe it's not the job, it's the circle. Yeah. You know, so sometimes it's hard. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's. Re I, I think it's one of the hardest things to do. You know, just yes. to, um, I don't know, limit your exposure that that type of people in, and especially if you have to work with them, for example, yes. mm -hmm. with maybe your, you know, family member. That's yes. very hard as well. Um, so it's mm -hmm. one. It's one of those things that um, you you probably have to take action and um yeah think through uh, think uh, things through or just make that change like if Absolutely. that's the job where people you're surrounded by people who are negative who gossip constantly mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. uh, all other things probably i don't know maybe it's time to think about changing the teams or work because if that's mm -hmm. just the environment that made you feel um not good about yourself or you know there are environments when yes. people play politics or put you put you down and mm -hmm. so it's, um, and as well it might might lead to some stress and anxiety um, absolutely yeah i mean we're all human beings and we all want to be liked in some way and we all form social circles so it's just important to analyze the circle that you're in how is that circle impacting you and your life because for me my circle should be an enhancement I should go in that circle and then I should be a better version of myself in that circle. When you make that, and I mean, this is, if we think about junior high or, you know, we're here it's junior high and high school, I, I don't know if it's still like primary school, prep school mm -hmm. <laughs> like in, in the UK, but if you think about those formative years, it was similar, right? The circle of friends, those you hang out with, it should be enhancing. So you're using the same inventory in life now as an adult. Who am I around? Because they said, what? The, show me your friends and you show me who you are. Mm -hmm. That's a very good old adage. Is Absolutely. It? So it works the same with um, at work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's actually, it, it really does. Um, I also, I know uh, Dr. Tamara, you already touched upon uh, some strategies for preventing bur burnout. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, can we maybe for busy professionals, uh, mm -hmm. maybe talk about maybe effective strategies for preventing uh, burnout in the workplace? Just absolutely. Maybe. Yeah, so. absolutely. So one of the greatest things, um, and it's so beneficial for one to know is number one, how does stress affect you? And you can recognize like, is it make you become angry? Are you um, anxious? You start having palpitations, you start having physical symptoms, headache, tension in the neck, low back pain, and so on. Number one. Number two, <clears throat> what are some of the things that brings you joy? Right? Is it music? listening to music? Is it taking some deep breathing exercises? Is it yoga? Is it a quick meditation? Um, is it walking? Is it what is something that brings you brings down your stress level really, really quickly? It's important to, if you have never thought about this, to try these different things. And when we're talking about yoga, I'm not telling you in your cubicle to turn into a pretzel. It's just not <laughs> funny. <laughs> It might not be possible. You might do a chair yoga. You might do a deep breathing exercise. Um, you might say, okay, I'm in a period of chronic stress. I need to take a walk. But look at the different things. Do I need to do a gratitude practice? Everyone's getting on my nerves. I'm seeing everything from the perspective of this isn't working, this isn't working, this isn't working. Okay, well, let me flip it and say what it is. What is it that I'm grateful for? So I'm grateful for this, 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 because it's really hard to have two of this, those emotions, those opposite emotions at the same time. When you start to write down and have a gratitude practice and you start documenting things you're grateful for, you will see that some of it will outweigh all the things that you were anxious or angry about, right? So 
those are some of the um, things that you can do. But there's also a technique that I came up with, which is called the pause method. So the P is literally, so this is to use in periods of high stress. So you can use this while you're at work. So you've already figured out what are some of the things that help you. You know, I, I like to do a deep breathing exercise. I like to meditate for a few minutes. I like to um, take a walk. I like to, um, you know, write down or do a gratitude practice. You know, you've chosen one out of those categories. So now incorporating the pause technique, it's P is literally pause. So you're in a period of high stress, you're going to react negatively. <laughs> so you take a period and pause. A is acknowledge your stressor. What is it in that period or in that moment that's bringing this high level of stress? You are going to understand how is the stressor affecting me? So am I having palpitations? Am I getting angry? Um, am I having a tension headache? How is it affecting you, right? So you're understanding that. S, you're going to set a self-care goal. Your self-care goal, you already have your list and you already know what works for you. Whenever I'm really stressed out, if I do a two-minute breathing exercise, I can feel my stress level going down. Or if I listen to this really great song that just gets my energy level out, then it you know brings me down. So then you set that self-care goal and then E is execute. You do it right at that moment for two minutes and then you'll bring that stressor down. So that's something that you can do at work. It's something that you can do in periods of high stress in order to move from that anger, that high stress level, that reactive level to the response level. So that's something one can do at work. It's called the pause method, which is something that I came up with. Oh, wow. That, 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 that sounds so, so helpful to know. It's always to have, it's always to, helpful to have something in your toolbox, right? If you Absolutely. feel this way, something you can come back and execute. Because yeah. if you if you do nothing about it, obviously that's just it just mounts, and it mounts. explodes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. No, thank you for sharing. Uh, that's I actually will document that as well after our conversation. <laughs> make sure as well if I find myself in this situation, so I can always come back and and pause. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Um, I also wanted to touch upon during our conversation with with uh, about, uh, to touch upon um, companies mm -hmm. um, because sometimes yeah we talk about employees how what they can do from their side mm -hmm. but as well um, I don't know whether it's an illegal in legal terms it's sometimes it's res responsibility for the firm uh, organization to make sure that um, uh, the companies have well being. Would you call it practices or mm -hmm. uh, um, programs making Absolutely. sure that their employees don't burn out and making sure that their uh, mental health is in place and my question in with regards to that um, is mm -hmm. the following how in your opinion how can em employers create a supportive environment to uh, combat burnout okay so i think one is to acknowledge that um, high stress exists within the organization and within the level. So starting from the top down, recognizing that high stress um, exists and two, that there are techniques and training out there to help to reduce the stress. Now we can say, and yes, we can say like, you know, from the company standpoint, um, the bottom line is productivity. The bottom line is proficiency. Um, they still have quota and that they're trying to meet. And that's why they have um, their employees. However, um, organizations also recognize that um, it's not to their financial benefit to have high turnover consistently because you're starting from scratch to have to train and to bring that other person up to speed. So having programs that exist um, periodically, such as maybe once a quarter, some organizations, um, they have um, here employee um, wellness programs where they provide um, different uh, 
avenues for the employees to reduce stress, teaching the techniques, some of what we just talked about, gratitude practice, mindfulness, um, breathing, meditation. Um, so it's important to provide this to the employees. Um, I do training workshops. So having someone like me coming in and training and even teaching about what we just talked about, the pause technique, um, pulling out from the employees, what are the stressors that they're having in their lives? How can they um, combat that to move from a period of chronic stress so that they're not moving down that phase that we talked about phase four, which is burnout and even worse, phase five, which is crisis mode, right? So bringing people like us in who have the skills, who have the experience um, to teach and to train the employees is something that's important to help um, these organizations to have thriving um, employees that can recognize and use these um, skill set of stress management and burnout prevention in their lives, not just at work, but also at home, because chronic stress affects everyone. No, that that's so that's so. Um important to know that uh, people like yourself uh, do come in and um, help companies with their employees' um, well-being, which means employee retention and employee uh, enjoyment. Yes. Uh, so what would they do for a living? That, that's so important. And do you work with uh, like big corporations? What, what kind of um, companies do you um, do you work do I work with? with? Yes. Yeah. So I work with um, <clears throat> organizations that usually have 500 or less employees um, doing training programs. Um, so it can be large, but as long as we're bringing down the, um, the size of the training, um, we can do it through virtual or in person. Um, and through the different industries. But there are some industries that are a little bit more prone to burnout, um, such as tech industries are very high prone. They're like 77% um, are feeling burned out. Financial industries are also another industry that's um, very high level and um, very burnout prone. So we're available to do training programs for those industries. And you know they can always find me on um, my Your Care and Docs website, um, which is U R C A R I N G D O C S dot com, um, and we have a um, link there that says you know work with me if anyone would love to connect, and also on LinkedIn where I put a lot of content, <laughs> where I am there as um, Tamara Beckford, MD. Perfect. I will um, put all the links in the show notes of the show and plus in the um, in the description box box of the youtube channel uh thank you on this on this note um, we are going to conclude our conversation i know tamara is very uh busy person i'm not going to keep you with all my <laughs> questions i know we could go on and on um today um mm -hmm. i just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much uh for uh being on my podcast and for sharing your knowledge expertise about this um such a um a very important issue like a burnout. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. And as we started the conversation and I said, you know, for those who produce um, content and for those who talk about burnout, um, it's so important for people like you and your podcast who highlight us so that we know that this information is spread and that we're able to make the difference that we're trying to make in this world to help to reduce our stress and burnout amongst our friends, colleagues, family members, co-workers, everyone. So thank you so much for having me on this show today. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Tamara. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.